Solana has been on an absolute tear lately. Their cryptocurrency price has exploded. We've seen lots of different NFT projects launch on top of Solana and an explosion of decentralized finance or DeFi activity. So what's really going on with the Solana ecosystem? And that's a question that I get quite frequently in the live streams I do on this channel Monday through Friday. Just subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. You'll find that about those whenever we go live. People ask me all the time, you know, should I be getting into the Solana ecosystem? It's really fast, it's cheap to use. And so I wanna make this video as a blockchain developer to set the record straight and tell you what what I think of Solana and how it compares to another smart contract platform like Ethereum, for example, and what I think the future of this technology is. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step, start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. So just for a quick recap, you know, what is Solana? Well, it's a high performance blockchain that supports smart contracts. So you can see they boast of, you know, sub cent transactions, thousands of transactions per second. And it also has a native cryptocurrency soul that's associated with it. Now, these are very impressive statistics for sure. And a lot of people think that Solana has big promise for the future. But just like everything else in technology and also most of life, these benefits do come with a certain set of trade offs, which I want to talk about in this video. And so to explain what those are, and what I think the future of Solana is, I'm going to compare it to something like Ethereum, which right now is the dominant smart contract platform. And so for for the sake of you know comparison as a benchmark, I'm actually going to compare this to Ethereum 2.0 and all of its capabilities versus Ethereum 1.0, which we're using today. All right, so let's start off with what Solana has going for it. What I what I think is doing well. So you know, first of all, these performance benefits for sure are impressive. Okay, the price performance of the actual cryptocurrency itself has done well. It's actually done phenomenally well. It's seen a significant amount of uh, NFT and DeFi adoption. It's already started to build a strong community around it, and it also has a pretty reasonable set of developer tools, which is essential for building building a developer ecosystem. So if you're trying to get into this uh, and you're curious about what the technologies are behind uh, Solana, so you can create smart contracts and actually write programs for Solana in Rust or C or C++. So these are conventional programming languages with many applications outside of the blockchain world, which means that there is an opportunity to bring other developers who already know these languages into the blockchain you know, space, but actually just train them to build blockchain applications or just learn it from scratch. And then you have this capability outside of blockchain. So these are all a lot of good things, but let's talk about the trade offs okay because like i was saying before when you have performance benefits like this um they always come at a cost so what are they well to understand this let's take a look at this diagram here this is going to talk about one of the most common problems in blockchain which is the scalability trilemma okay so these are three different problems that you have to take into account when you're trying to think about how do i make a blockchain that is uh, performant, that preserves decentralization, and is also secure for people to store money and value on top of. Okay, so those are the three things of tension, scalability, security, and decentralization. This is what's known as a scalability trilemma. And at the end of the day, nobody's totally cracked this to where there's a perfect solution. What you really try to do is get the best trade-off of all these three things to achieve the maximum you know, possible desired end result. How Solana is able to do this, uh, well, there's multiple ways, but the biggest one I want to talk about, pr probably the biggest compromise that I, I see when I'm looking at this, there's some sacrifice in the decentralization category to achieve scalability. Let me explain exactly how that happened. Okay. Solana has 924 validating nodes, which is pretty good for sure. But compare that to Ethereum 2.0, which already has 223,000 validators for a blockchain that isn't really actively used just yet. Again, we're building Ethereum 2.0 off to the side and we haven't really turned it on and migrated over it to it completely. So that's 200 times the amount of decentralization. Okay. So one of the reasons behind this is um, the hardware requirements actually to run a Solana validating node. So again, the blockchains are just made up of computers, which are nodes that all talk to one another. And these computers run clients. So it's basically a, you know, a process you have to install on your computer and actually to run the blockchain itself, you have to maintain a copy of all the state. And so in order for Solana to achieve these, you know, subsent transactions and these really fast transaction times, all on one single layer one blockchain, you have to have a really fast computer in order to do that. And in many cases, these hardware requirements are going to be too much for people who are want to run validating nodes. And that will likely increase, you know, as the state size of Solana actually gets bigger over time. Because when you start, you know, including all these transactions really quickly per second, the size of the state grows and this problem can actually compound. Now, there are some caveats 
to this. Um, you know, the counter argument is that over time, you know, hardware will actually get cheaper. So the amount of US dollar it takes to run that type of hardware will decrease. But I think that's going to happen fast enough really to significantly impact this problem. And I think a lot of those benefits are going to get outweighed by the growing state size. And so that's probably one of the biggest, you know, sacrifices is that decentralization in order to get this performance benefit, which in the long run, when you're talking about a global, you know, settlement layer for value, I do think that people are actually going to care about decentralization. And so another trade-off is actually in the developer ecosystem for Solana itself, okay? So I talked about how, you know, Solana has made very specific choices for the developer community about how they can write, you know, smart contracts and, you know, C, C++, Rust. This can be good to try to get, you know, regular developers into the blockchain space without having to learn new coding languages, but it's actually adding some friction into the equation for the network effect or actual adoption of Solana to grow as fast as some of the alternative layer one solutions. So what do I mean by that? So um, basically... A lot of the other layer ones that have popped up in, a, you know, sort of the Ethereum killer, so to speak, are able to bootstrap a lot of the developer tools that Ethereum has already created in order to launch their applications on top of their blockchains and, you know, port apps over really quickly. People talk about the low effort forks. That's what they are. They're basically taking existing popular Ethereum applications and then just quickly porting them over to their own blockchains. And this is harder to do in Solana. Now, there are some Solidity compilers that, you know, will help you do some of this type of thing. But to really get the performance benefit, yeah, the Solana smart contracts work primarily completely differently under the hood than something like Ethereum smart contracts. And so you're adding this friction to the equation. So basically, it is easier for outside developers to come in and learn something brand new because they don't have to learn a program language, but they do have to learn a bunch of new paradigms. And current blockchain developers to switch over something like Solana also have to learn a lot of new things in order to you know, maybe bootstrap some of their applications and get the real performance benefits. And so this is actually going to add some friction for things to be as explosive on top of Solana as maybe some alternative L1s that are just EVM compatible and able to fork Ethereum apps and move them over really quickly. Now, another thing is from an end user's perspective, you don't have, you know, the easy ability to use the exact same wallet in every ecosystem. You can't just take MetaMask and point it to a new network and start using Solana that way. There's actually more friction involved for the end user, okay? All right, so those are some of the trade-offs. Those are some of the downsides, but what do I think about the actual future of Solana and the technology itself? So I do think that Solana has, you know, gained significant adoption up to this point, and I do think that there is quite a bit of untapped potential here for it to capture some of this market share over time. I do think that it's just getting started and it has a lot of potential to, you know, stick around and gain adoption. But that is with some caveats here, okay? So I'll talk about those. So first of all, let's talk about the multi-chain world thesis. So the whole idea here is that we're living in a world with multiple blockchains, which you can move in between and do lots of different things on, okay? So first of all, do I think that we're in a multi-chain world? Do I think that we'll have a multi-chain world in the future? I do think think that we will. Okay. Now, that being said, it's not what most people think. Most people think of a multi-chain world as this nice, you know, world where everybody shares an even distribution of usage, right? Where basically, you know, my chain is going to be just as valuable as yours because they're often thinking about the cryptocurrency that they're buying and hoping that it's just going to take off just like somebody else's. But that's not typically how the world tends to work. Basically, a disproportionate amount of activity tends to happen in one or two areas. It's a lot like the Pareto distribution with the 80-20 rule. And I think this is also going to play out in the blockchain world, where we're likely going to see a massive amount of value settled on one, maybe two dominant smart contract platforms. And I think there's lots of reasoning for this. You know, number one, at the end of the day, you don't want to jump around and use a bazillion different ecosystems for a final, you know, source of truth settlement layer. And when you have major, you know, financial applications and and value that really has to be settled, you know, billions and billions of dollars in value, the market is really going to care about decentralization in the long run for this type of use case. And so for that reason, I still see ETH and its ETH 2.0 form as being the leader for that particular spot. It already has the momentum for that. And a lot of other, you know, networks have to significantly compete in terms of network effect to actually gain that position. Now, that being said, you know, there might be room for an additional player to steal a significant portion of the market share of that. Could that be Solana? It very well could. But at the end of the day, do I ultimately think it's an Ethereum killer and that's going to dethrone ETH as the leading smart contract platform? 
I don't think so anytime soon. And so in the short term, I think what's going to happen is a lot of like what's happening on these other alternative layer one blockchains and smart contract platforms. So typically what happens is something kind of innovative happens on top of Ethereum. A trend takes off. That's where a lot of the adoptions happening. So like DeFi, NFTs. And then basically you see this pattern. You see people make a lot of money here and then other sort of copycat layer ones start to take some of this and then people go chase the gains in that chain for a while and then they chase another chain and they chase another chain. But typically what happens is these platforms see a surge of activity for a little while and they spike and then they drop off. So it's very volatile in this way. I think that's probably going to keep happening for the short to midterm. Now, the real caveat here uh, is with another trend that's emerging in blockchain, which is gaming. And I do think it's very possible that we could see, you know, gaming innovation happen on a different platform. And so we'll have to see, you know, who leads the charge in that regard. But that may very well be a situation where Solana or someone similar could take a lead role. All right. So that's an overview of the Solana blockchain and what I think about it. You know, if you've been checking this out, you're thinking about, you know, getting in the Solana project. Those are my thoughts. And that's what I think you need to know about this technology going going forward. I do think it has a lot of promise and a lot of potential. That's always with some caveats. And these, you know, performance benefits that it has right now it definitely comes with some trade-offs and that's what you need to know. So hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast in this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you'd like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.